Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, my name is Gaurav Aroda and welcome back to the sixth lecture of Spatial Statistics and Spatial Econometrics. Uh, before we go on to this lecture, let's do a little recap of what we covered in the last uh, uh, lecture. Uh, as you can see on your screen, uh, we broadly covered two topics in the previous lecture, uh, where we formally sort of transitioned from uh, a data understanding uh, of of uh, you know of spatial delineated uh, products uh, to statistical formulations and statistical uh, you know uh, uh, modeling of those data. So uh, the first thing we did was broad steps in spatial statistics. So you know the first step was you know what is spatial statistics? Well, it is a science of uncertainty of spatial nature. So the first step was to measure or quantify disorder of spatial nature, right? So to, to, to quantify spatial disorder. And we talked about variance, interquartile range, and entropy being the measures, uh, alternative measures that we will uh, look at. The second step was mostly about modeling or measuring spatial dependence. The third step was from moving from correlation, that is what of location delineated statistics, to why in explaining why do we see the type of spatial trends we see, why do we see the kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 spatial uh, dependence structures that we see. And we ended the lecture with this understanding of random functions with spatial delineations, right? So we looked at what a random variable is and how does an understanding of random variables then translates into these jointly distributed random functions where you have random variables located at different locations in space and then those are moving together uh, bound by a density function uh, called as the joint CDF, all right? So in today's lecture, we are going to look at a measure of spatial disorder or spatial variation known as entropy. So here on this slide, uh, I have a heading or a title called as entropy as a measure of variability of a random process. So we are look, going to study entropy in general. From those of you coming from, uh, you know, a statistics background, an econometrics background, economics background, uh, might not have heard of entropy or might not have really studied it in detail. However, those coming from engineering and physical sciences might have actually studied entropy formally in your, uh, in your studies, right? So it will be interesting to first review entropy as a measure of disorder and then take that understanding for a general entropy measure of variation to entropy uh, as a measure for spatial variation, what we call as spatial entropy, all right? So let's get started. So uh, in order to understand what is entropy, let's first suppose, suppose there are, there are k states of nature nature, all right? So these can be indexed by or denoted by i goes from 1 to k, all right? And each state i, each state i occurs with a probability p i. Okay, so we have a probability measure for each state occurring uh, 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 in, in, in this system, a random process or random system that we are trying to study. So basically, you know, what we have is states 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to k. And then we also have a probability measure attached to each state, that is p1, p2, p3, p4, 
all the way till p k, right? And given that these are probability measures, they should, you know, they should follow some properties that we uh, uh, that that we know from from our uh, you know uh, previous training in probability and statistics. But we are going to still look look at them. Each probability i must lie between zero and one, right? For all i's that is one to k, right? And the sum, sum of these probability measures for all k states must be equal to 1, right? So, the probabilities must sum to 1 and each probability entity must be between 0 and 1, right? Then having learned that, having learned that we can define entropy, entropy of the probabilistic system, probabilistic system um, as under. So, we have E as the entropy measure for this system equals minus summation i equals 1 to k p i that is the probability measure times the log of p i. So, it is a natural log that I am taking of p i and you know uh, times the, the probability itself, right. So, p i times log p i summed across all k states of nature and then multiplied by minus 1 is equal to entropy. This is the definition of entropy, right. We have to be a little bit careful here, first of all, uh, you know, look, p i can take a value of 0, but then log of 0 is not defined, right. So, we, we, we say where, so to account for that, we say where um, x log x is defined to be 0 uh, for x equals 0. So, wherever you have probability being 0 that does not contribute to the entropy of the system, right. So, the state that does not occur does not contribute to the entropy of the system. That is the interpretation of the physical world uh, that we get here. So, one thing we, uh, you know, we have defined entropy formally, but the system that we have wor worked with is a discrete uh, probabilistic system, right. So, so, what we are working with is a discrete, discrete random process, right. So, this is a uh, entropy definition for discrete uh, random process, okay. What if we had a, uh, a, 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 a nature where states were continuous? Let us look at that. So, so, so let us call this a little aside, let us call this a little aside so that we can define entropy for the case uh, where the states of nature were continuous. So, now uh, you know the states of nature are denoted by theta instead of i. Theta is a continuous random variable which goes from theta lower bar to a upper bar. So, there is a lower bound and upper bound and each state of theta, right, each theta will appear or occur with probability density function f of theta, right. So, uh, each theta state occurs with a probability density function denoted by f of theta, which is nothing but also the frequency, frequency with which each theta value will appear. Then the entropy, the entropy of uh, this continuous random process, random process will simply be given by E equals minus. So, now the summation in case of continuous system becomes integral. Integral that ranges from the lowest to the highest possible value of theta times 
f of theta, which is nothing but p i in case of uh, you know uh, 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 the discrete case and times the natural log of f of theta d theta. Okay. So, now I have a, a formal definition of entropy uh, uh, for the case when we are working with a continuous uh, uh, you know uh, uh, states of nature, we are working with a set of continuous states of, uh, of nature. So, this is an aside we will still sort of you know work with uh, this this formal setting that we began with so we are working with suppose there are k states of nature each state given by a index i i goes from 1 to k right and for each state we have a probability uh, you know of occurrence of each of that state i given by pi and for that then we define the entropy as minus summation i equals 1 to k pi ln pi so, with that understanding, uh, let us come back you know uh, 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 to our discrete case. So, uh, first of all, uh, when I have this idea that i could be 1 to k, p i could be p 1 to p k and I have an entropy measure which is uh, minus summation i equals 1 to k, p i ln p i. Right. Notice, notice that um, the states of nature, states of nature, uh, may have real-world interpretations. Right. So it's uh, it's not necessarily a mathematical entity, these could be uh, real world entities as well, right. So, what could be those examples? I mean, so I's could be a set of commodity prices, right. So, you could have a commodity, let us say, let us say gold, uh, or you could have a commodity like wheat or rice, and for that commodity, you have k possible price levels that appear in the real world and each price level i can appear with a probability p i right. So, we can we can adapt this abstract mathematical notation to a real world understanding of what uh, might i be uh, you know representing right. So, we will have set of k commodity prices with an attached probability probability for each price level. These may you know as well you know as a second example uh, represent population density, population density uh, you know at, at, at various locations in a city. So, I have kept the city to be constant let us say we talk about national capital territory of Delhi or we can talk about Mumbai, we can talk about Chennai, talk about Kolkata or any other city uh, that you uh, that you may be interesting interested in. Now, the probability the population density can be considered as a random variable. You could have k different possibilities of population densities for that given city which can be sort of you know uh, uh, where do these k different possibilities come from? Well, it depends what what location are you you know drawing this population density from. If you are drawing it from a you know less part sparsely populated area let us say near the airport uh, you know an international airport you might not have that much population density. But if you go to the city center you might have very high population den uh, density right. So, all these population densities uh, you know may occur occur uh, with attached probability right. So, they can occur let us say probabilistically they could be probabilistic. Now, in that case, in that case, right, we may be interested, may be interested, interested in, uh, you know, uh, 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 the mean of this 
uh, random process, right? So, you know, mean is the first moment of a random process. If I have a range of prices for gold uh, occurring with different probabilities, I might want to know what is the average price of gold that I can expect, right? Or I, I might be interested in the second moment, you know, what is the variance? Uh, you know, can I give a measure of variance to the price of gold? If I'm comparing two different commodities, you know, I might want to know which commodity has higher variability in prices before I, for example, am trying to, uh, you know, invest in those uh, commodities, right? So in that case, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, the mean is given by mu, which is the first moment. So that would be expectation of I, which is given as summation I equals 1 to K, I times P I, right? And if we, and in case of, you know, uh, let me just use a different pen, and in case of continuous random variable, mu will be integration, integral of uh, uh, theta, f of theta, t theta, where the integration is done from the lower bound to the upper bound of theta, right? So this is a standard deviation of mean, right? This is something we are aware from uh, the basic statistics, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, exposure, right? The second uh, moment that you may be interested in, as I talked about in a, min uh, a minute ago, is called as the variance. So, variance sigma squared is the second moment. So, it is given by I expectation of I squared, which is then uh, given as I equals 1 to K I squared P I, right? And for the continuous case, for the corresponding, uh, you know, uh, continuous case and in case for the continuous random process, we can say sigma squared is nothing but integration uh, theta lower bar to theta upper bar theta squared f of theta d theta, okay? Now, um, okay, so Uh, rely on the definition here, okay? Uh, having understood that, now we know that sigma squared measures, sigma squared measures the amount or extent of variability, amount or extent of variability in the uh, random process of interest. Okay, and of course, you know, random process of interest could be these examples like prices or, you know, population density, whatever you deem uh, to be, uh, you know, interesting for your own research. It depends on the analyst. Okay, now the thing is, the, the interesting thing is that it turns out, it turns out that E entropy and variance sigma squared are closely related. So what I am claiming, the claim that I am giving you here is that entropy is an alternative measure of sigma squared if we speak mathematically and you know more substantially you know entropy provide us, provides us a measure of variability of a uh, random process just like variance would do that, right? And we will see this, so we will see how this key information piece plays out for a, uh, for an example distribution. So I'm going to go on to, uh, you know, uh, study this, study for exponential distribution in the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about exponential distribution now and then figure out how, you know, uh, sigma squared and E might be closely uh, related.
Okay. So, um, as a next step, we are studying exponential distribution. So, what is exponential distribution? So, we have a random variable x, right? We always begin with a random variable x, and we say that this x is distributed with exp lambda. What is lambda? Lambda is the is the distribution parameter. So, lambda where lambda is the distribution parameter. Okay, and uh, and and the the density function f of x, which is the frequency or the probability of occurrence of any given value of x, um, which is distributed by an exponential distribution, is given as lambda times exponential uh, minus lambda x, such that x is greater than or equal to 0, and I have already said that lambda is the distribution parameter. I mean, alternatively, I could have written this as lambda e to the power minus lambda x, right? You are aware that these are, uh, we are aware that these are equivalent expressions uh, mathematically. So, the real world instances, so how, what good is exponential distribution? Why do we even care about it, right? So, the real world instances that can be studied, that can be studied or modeled by an exponential distribution are entities like you know time interval between hospital visits okay or you know visits to a na na uh, you know to a, a national park you know or visits to a national park okay um, or you know the visits for vacation, right? So, so how frequently an individual takes vacation, an individual needs to, uh, you know, visit a hospital for getting some, uh, some treatment, or how frequently do they visit a given national park? So, if you live around uh, New Delhi, we have Jim Gorbin National Park, and we can, we can, we can be interested in modeling what is the time interval uh, between two, uh, you know, visits between uh, uh, two visits to the Jim Corbett National Park, right? That gives us an understanding of how frequently an individual is undertaking recreation. And then moreover, you know, whenever they take recreation, undertake un recreation, what's the time interval, uh, you know, uh, 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 with which they visit a particular, uh, you know, national park, right? So the, to be able to model this time interval between visits for a particular kind uh, or two events, is you know uh, 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 is modeled by the exponential distribution. So x per se, x per se, this random variable x is nothing but the uh, you know uh, the time interval between two events of interest, right? Um, we can have different interpretations here, right? So it could also be time spent, time spent on cab rides uh, between uh, points A and B, right? So, you can have two interest points A and B, you can have it from let us say the railway station to your workplace, from the airport to the, uh, to the city center, uh, something like that. And during the day, you have different, during different time, you have different parameters like heat, pollution, traffic congestion, or availability of rides right and so on and so forth which can you know basically deliver different time periods that it will take from me to go from the city uh, city's airport to the city center right how do we model this time spent uh, you so these the sp time spent can take a range of values and each value that this time spent takes has a given probability distribution in order to model this we have this exponential distribution 
uh, you know uh, device at our uh, at our disposal right so to define finally uh, so uh, an exponential distribution an exponential distribution provides a probability distribution probability uh, distribution of time time between events that occur independently. So, two events like for example, rides from the airport to the city center, they have to be independent, right. So, it is not, it is not that you know I go to the airport and then somehow my second ride is dependent on what I did in my first ride. So, the two rides are independent of each other, right. Um, and, and these are continuous events. So, I must be able to you know uh, uh, observe them happening frequently, right. It is not that it, they only happen once. So, if it happens only once in a while or it only happens once forever, then you know exponential distribution will not be able to model it. And they happen at a constant average rate. So, there is some rate at which these rides are taken or the hospital visits, visits are taken or visits to national parks occur and this constant average rate is modeled by the parameter lambda of our distribution. So, this is a measure for the average rate at which this happens is given by uh, is given by uh, you know uh, lambda. Okay. So, I mean what do we have eventually? I mean we have x uh, is distributed as exponential lambda and that means that f of x is lambda e to the power minus lambda x such that x is between 0 to infinity bound open. So, x is greater than or equal to 0 and then we can write mu x which is nothing but uh, the, the first moment of this distribution which is nothing the mean of x. So, if, if you have time spent on a cab ride from airport to city center, then mu x will be interpreted as the average time that is spent on this uh, you know on this uh, ride from the airport to the city center. This is given as 0 to infinity that is the that is the range of x, x f of x dx this value turns out to be 1 over lambda. Similarly, I can figure out the second moment 0 to infinity x squared f of x dx is given as 1 over lambda squared and you know that will imply that the standard deviation of x is nothing but the square root of variance that is 1 over lambda. So, the one one of the properties of exponential distribution is that the mean is exactly equal to uh, you know uh, standard deviation and they are both inverse of the average rate at which uh, this event is happening. So, the next step that we will do now, next step that we will undertake is to calculate, calculate the entropy of uh, you know of the system described by the exponential distribution. Okay. So, now the entropy we know is my negative of integration from 0 to infinity which is the range of x, f of x times ln f of x dx. Okay. So, as a next step we want to first calculate this entropy. So, calculate E and after that we will be showing, we want to show that you know E and sigma squared x are closely uh, related, right. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to verify this claim, verify this claim for exponential distribution. Okay. So, uh, so what we will do is we will 
uh, stop here in this lecture and we will go to the next lecture and we will start from calculation of entropy and showing or verifying the claim that entropy is indeed closely related to sigma squared x. Thank you. Mm -hmm.